You may help you. Yeah. Yeah, that's, that's it. Blessed art thou, o Lord God of our fathers. Blessed art thou, o Lord God of our fathers, for thou art just in all that thou hast done to us. Blessed art thou, o Lord God of our fathers. Wisdom. <coughs> the reading is from St. Paul's Epistle to Titus. Wisdom, let us attend. My child Titus, faithful is the saying, and concerning these things, I desire you to affirm confidently that those who have believed in God may be thoughtful of how to preside in honorable occupations. These things are good and profitable to men, but avoid foolish disputes and genealogies and contentions and controversies about the law, for they are unprofitable and vain. A man who is a heretic after the first and second admonition reject, knowing that such one is subverted and sins being self-condemned. When I sent Artemis to you, or Chikisos, giving diligence to come to me to Nacropolis, for I had <coughs> determined to winter there. Set forth Zenos the lawyer and Apollos on their journey diligently, that they may be lacking in nothing. And let our people also learn how to preside in honorable occupations, so as to help in the cases of urgent need, that they should not be unfruitful. All who are with me salute you. Salute those who love us in the faith. Christ be with you all. Amen. Peace be to thee that readest. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. O God, with our own ears have we heard. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. said to his disciples, uh, You are the light of the world. The city set on a hill cannot be hid. Nor do men light a lamp and put it under a bushel, but on a stand, and it gives light to all in the house. Uh, let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works and give glory to the Father who is in heaven. Think not that I have come to abolish the law and the prophets. I have come not to abolish them, but to fulfill them. For truly I say to you, till heaven and earth pass away, not an iota uh, nor a dot will pass uh, from the law until all is accomplished. Whosoever then relaxes one of the least of these commandments and uh, teaches men to so shall be called the least in the kingdom of heaven. But he who does them, teaches them, shall be called great in the kingdom of heaven. Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit, now and ever and unto ages of ages. Amen. Uh, the Gospel lesson today is, is another part of the Sermon on the Mount, just like the Gospel lesson last week. And what Jesus says is that disciples are designated to be the light of the world, meaning that by their lives and being, they're going to point toward Him as God, and therefore attract people. Uh, to the Lord Jesus Christ. Now they lived in a world that was filled with brutality, like crucifixions, that were designed to terrify other people so they would not dare uh, defy the law of the Roman Emperor. Uh, Rome became so corrupt with drunken orgies 
uh, that it became impossible to govern. And so as the barbarians began to intrude uh, from the east, uh, the Roman Empire had lost the discipline to defend itself. And so it died, the Western Roman Empire. Jesus is inviting us to live his commandments and directions in such a way that people are drawn not to us, but to him. And certainly in our world today, it has become as corrupt as the Roman Empire at the time of Jesus. Uh, we are needed to show the light of God to the world. Uh, the, the brutal murders of these young women that have occurred over and over again, and these young women that think it's okay to meet some stranger in a park at 3 a.m. It's all part of a corrupt world that is attracting us to orgastic pleasure uh, through drugs, through sex, and other things. And so the world is really in the same kind of shape in our culture and in the European countries that it was at the time of Christ with the Roman Empire. Uh, and we don't take seriously that we are called like the Twelve were to show the light of God to the world by how we live, by what we say, and by what we do. And um, he talks at the end of this passage about those who teach people to ignore the commandments. And of course he illuminated the commandments, explaining to us it was not simply about killing somebody, but about hatred in our heart. It was not simply about adultery, but it was about looking at the opposite sex with lust in our hearts. And so the commandments still stand. But they stand no longer as a set of rigid rules like the Pharisees applied them, but they now stand as Jesus illuminated them as directions for our life about what we are to do and how we are to live, standing in the face of God 24-7. Now, none of us are really capable of doing that any more than Peter was or James and John uh, or Andrew or the others. It took them three years standing in the presence of the living God to slowly become transformed. And the crowning of it was after his ascension when the Holy Spirit descended and God took up residence in their hearts as the church. And God still stays with us today in our hearts in the church. To become the light of the world, a lamp which should not be hid, we need to do the work to build a mystical relationship with Christ through our prayer life and through participation in the service of the church and feeding on the very life of God and the body and blood of Christ. And so the business of, of this is not doing these things for ourselves, what we get out of it, but doing these things for God and for others so that we become totally unselfish in our love for people and therefore are shining the light of Christ in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Let us say, with all our mind, with all our soul, 